good morning, everyone. Good morning. So um, good to have you here. Welcome to, we have some guests with us and glad to always have people come in and join us. And a um, few things going on. We do have, um, we have a regular ongoing group on Monday and Wednesday, Rock Steady Boxing. It's a great opportunity for people with Parkinson's and other neurological issues. It's a free event led by trained professionals. So it's really great ministry going on Mondays and Wednesdays. And they also look for volunteers if anyone would like to. Um, women, you're going to have a short rehearsal right after worship today. And we'll do it and move on then because we're going to sing next week. Um, <clears throat> and thank you to Ken who's going to play for us this week. So we're looking forward to that. Good to have our choir starting to gather again. Um, we will start rehearsals this Wednesday. That's for handbells at 6 o'clock and at 645 is our chancel choir. There is no audition necessary. You are welcome to come and join us for either of those. And if you've always thought you wanted to try something musical, handbells is the place to start. If you can count to four or six, right? Or even three. Well, you might have to count to six well, at times, six. But, but definitely three and four. You can probably play the handbells. So, love to have anybody who is interested. If you have questions, you can talk to Karen or um, several of the people up here are also in the handbell choir, so you can talk to anybody and we'll direct you to where you can have that information. Um, also, this week, on Tuesday night, we have a seasonal meeting. And that is, a, that is, we've kind of combined some different groups in the church. We're doing this by seasons. So this season will be September, October, November, and December. If you think there's a ministry that you would love to see happening during those months, or if you'd like to just help with one of those ministries, if you have something in mind that you'd like to try new or there's a, something we've always done and you want to make sure it's going to happen, come to that meeting or at least talk to me before the meeting so we can make sure that's included. Um, we also have a worship meeting this Wednesday night if you're interested in helping with planning worship. We'd love to have you come and join us. That's at 5 o'clock on Wednesday. And then following that are bells and choir. And... Um, our Christian Children's Fellowship for kindergarten through uh, fifth graders starts next Monday. Not tomorrow, but next Monday after all of our schools have started. So August the 19th. And on that day, we also have a stewardship finance meeting and a board meeting. And the youth group will start back on, which is 6th through 12th graders, it will start back on Sunday, August 25th with scriptures and snacks. And we're looking at that holiday world trip. There's more information in your bulletin. So if you're interested, let us know so we can look at getting enough people together to go. Anything else? Next week? Okay. And worship and wonder starts back next Sunday. So if you're here and you're of that age... We do have worship bags outside that are hanging up. <clears throat> they have coloring sheets and some books in them, and they also have some word searches, things like that for our older kids. So grab yourself one of the worship bags if you would like that for today. All right. Uh, we have an event coming up in the church. We're just kind of giving you a preliminary information about it. it's going to be october the 10th so that's a few months out but we do want everybody to be thinking about this uh, we are going to have a uh, free meal at chuckleberry winery Ooh, ah there you go and uh, that is going to be so we can start our legacy fund or our endowment fund to get people thinking about leaving uh, something to the church in your will, if you haven't already done so. Uh, we're also looking for folks, if you're already doing that, and you have a passion about that, and you might want to tell other people about why you, you, you're doing that, 
uh, we need a couple people to speak. So uh, we're looking for that as well. But we'll have more information and send out invitations and things uh, about it. Uh, but that is October the 10th, the Thursday, Chuckleberry Winery. It's going to be a good time and good information, so something to think about for the near future. And as we prepare to move into our prelude, I was invited to say something about God's love for all creatures, great and small. Always nice to follow behind her. Thank you, Miss Karen. Good morning, everyone. You know, it's always interesting when I get behind this podium. I'm going to just take a special moment here today. And last night I got to be a, a not a uh, attendee to a very special wedding. It was my nephew, Ethan Roby. He married this beautiful little lady. And it was, it was such an emotional ceremony. And uh, it was, you know, good to see such true, true love between these two as they start their lives. And today, my friends, 
it's my 34th wedding anniversary to that beautiful lady. <laughs> I admire her very dearly and love her very much. She put up with me all those years. So now, back to the hand, matter at hand. Please stand as we do our call to worship. We are disciples of Christ, a movement for holiness in a fragmented world. As part of the one body of Christ, we welcome all to the Lord's table as God has welcomed us. Let us do our opening hymn, Bless the Lord, O My Soul, Ten Thousand Reasons.
May we bow our heads in prayer, please? We come to you, holy God, with our needs. We are people who are broken, people who struggle in this world, people who deal with heavy decisions and fight our own feelings. We have realities we do not want to face. But, it also, but we also bring our joys, our dreams, and our celebrations. We come to be lifted out of our out of ourselves and brought into the fullness of life with you. Hear us now as together we lift our voices and praise Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Please have a seat as we invite our young people to please come up for our children's moment. Come on down, everybody. Good morning, everybody. It took me a minute to figure out who you are, Jasper, but your hair looks cool, dude. I like it. I like it. Looking nice. Uh, you think so? Okay, well, it looks good. It looks good. I like it. Oh, okay. I understand. It's good. Oh, did you? Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Well, I want you guys to help me with some stuff today. You all help me? We all good? Landon, can you help me with some stuff? Today, help me out. Liam, can you help me? Jasper, can you help me out today? Okay, you help me out, Penelope? Okay. All right, I want you to tell me if this is true or not true. I'm going to stand up here. Okay. All right. <clears throat> true or not true? I am 10 feet tall. True or not true? Not true. Really? I thought that would be... Okay, no, I'm not 10 feet tall. What? True? Penelope, no, nah, you're right. I'm not 10 feet tall. No, I'm not. I'm only like about 5 foot 9, 5 foot 10, depending on how you measure me. So, yeah. So I'm not 10 feet tall. No, I'm really. So that wasn't the truth, was it? That wasn't the truth. Ha has anybody ever told you a lie sometimes? Maybe one of your friends at school, they were like, I caught a fish, and it was like bigger than a house, and I, stuff like that, you know. You know, I hit a home run, and it went over four ball fields and hit a window two states away, stuff like that, you know, tell you guys. Yeah, sometimes people are not honest with us, are we? Yeah. Well, how God wants us to act is, and we're going to talk about that today, is God would like us to act in two different ways. God will want us to be honest, and God would also want us to be loving at the same time. Now, are there ways to be honest and not loving at the same time? Can you be honest and not loving at the same time? Yeah. Can you give me an example, Penelope? How can you be honest but not loving? What do you think? You did not catch it, yeah. Yeah, you can kind of want to be close to somebody or impress somebody but not, not be honest about it. Yeah, well, that's true. Well, we, God wants us to be both honest and loving. Have any of your, your parents or a teacher ever told you something you didn't like? That made you mad sometimes? Yeah, that happens to everybody Yeah, My, my parents and teachers did that, that to me too. But you know why they tell us stuff like that? Yeah, I know you're, you see it right over here, don't you? Yeah. You know why? 
because they love us. And they try to tell us stuff so that uh, we can grow up and be people who love and care about people and we won't do things that are going to hurt ourselves or hurt other people or are going to be mean and harmful to others. So, I mean, sometimes we don't want to hear it, but it's good when people are loving and honest with us because it shows that they do really care about us. It's not fun, though, is it? No, I don't, I don't like it either, you know, but, but it is good to have that. So we're going to talk about that uh, today in our lesson. And remember, next week, we start back with worship and wonder. Can we have a circle up here moment and say our prayer, please? Come on up, come on up, Jasper. Here we go, Land and Liam, come on up. Good job. Good job, Jasper. There you go. Thank you, everybody. We've got several pieces of music today. We had our uh, favorite hymn Sunday last week, and as I told them last week, you people chose over 50 different hymns. <laughs> we couldn't fit them all in. So we're doing them for the next several weeks, our favorite hymns. That first hymn was picked by one of our youth. We have a couple others in this service picked by our youth. Long before the pandemic, we always sang the doxology after we had collected offering. With the pandemic, we quit passing the plates and there was no one bringing them forward and the doxology just didn't really work in the service at that point but it's been missed by some of our youth. So we're singing the doxology today as a reminder of our blessings and the blessings that flow from God as we celebrate our tithes and offerings. It's on page 46 or it's up on the screen. Let us give God thanks. Oh, Lord, we do indeed praise you for all the blessings in our lives. And as we share those blessings, oh God, whether it be through money or time or talents, we pray that you will bless each one, that all will bring praise and glory to you, that others will come to know you. It's in the name of your Son we pray. Amen we prepare for our time of prayer together, we're going to sing another song. I think it's right here, isn't it? Sorry. Yes. Well, we have a couple more today we're going to be singing that our youth really like, and they just all fit well together. So we're going to be singing one, another one, but as we're singing that, if you have a prayer request or concern that you have not shared and would like to, you may text it to the number in your bulletin or that's up on the screen here in worship. Let us prepare by singing. Kumbaya.
I am have a few texts here, which is great. Catch up and get on our prayer list as well. And um, a couple updates, thank you. So we want, so we have a couple of things. Um, one is a praise. Praise to God for antibiotics and scientists, which I think is always something to be thankful for. So um, they help a lot in our healing process. As we <clears throat> start, so we have that praise and um, got one other one down to get to. So as we get to those, our praises want to also, um, not sure praise or concern, but Jim and Amanda and Elliot are all competing in the Ironman Triathlon next Sunday. So they've been training for months for this, and uh, we shall see. Uh, they're still testing the water to see if the levels there are acceptable for swimming next Sunday. And, um, but they still will have the swimming, I mean the swimming, the running and the biking, biking and running, whatever, biking and running portions. So that is next Sunday. <coughs> um, Jim won't be here, but I will, and then I'll be leaving afterwards to go congratulate them at the end. So um, also a praise and a thanks from Brooke for all of your support. She had a felony expunged from her record this week. Yes. Oh. And she said thank you to everyone for your support, your prayers, and just all the support she has received. Um, we're just really proud of the work she has done and continues to do, and just uh, really a great example on turning your life around and turning it back to God. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> on our prayer concerns, uh, Doug A. is now under hospice care, and that is to also help, though, with his current treatment plan and for comfort as well. So I want to keep Doug and all his family in prayer on this health journey. Um, Sandy is not only recovering, but like Karen, right back. But she's recovering from two cataract surgeries. She's recovering from two cataract surgeries, but here they are playing and singing, so we appreciate that. Glad they're doing well. Also, Jim reminded me that Marsha H. is back from her knee surgery, and yeah, doing well. She came in with no cane. I forgot she'd had it done, so, you know, she's, it's been a few weeks, so uh, great. But love to celebrate those things. Um, Elise and Rich are recovering from COVID. She has had a particularly difficult time with being pretty sick for at least two weeks with that. So I'm going to keep them in our prayers as they're still recovering. Um, Laura is recovering from heart surgery but is having complications, has had some seizure, seizures since then. And that's a sister of Julie, uh, Julie A's. So I'm going to keep her in our prayers and for a good recovery there. Uh, Emily M. is recovering from surgery to, that she had last Sunday morning to stop a brain bleed and is doing well. Thank you. Oh, she's texting people and talking to them. So she's, she's that, that is great. So thank you. Uh, we always appreciate those good updates. Uh, Chelsea, who's a friend of Marliana's, is recovering from surgery on her collarbone and is is doing well last i talked with them so um, reverend lana m is recovering from an extended hospital stay for heart procedures and she is a retired disciples pastor here in kentucky um, also um, carlene r 
is having colon cancer surgery on Tuesday, and that's a friend of Kathy's. Uh, Father Joe B. is in the hospital from a stroke, um, pretty severe stroke, and he is the pastor at Botland Christian Church and friend of Franklin's. And we have um, some, some passing to share. The family of James Thomas S. passed away last week. He was a great nephew of Ralph's. And the family of Peggy Greenwell, who passed away last week, who was a niece of Judy's. And then also the family of Jonathan J., a 36-year-old who passed away suddenly, unexpectedly, this week. Um, and that's from Betty M., we also want to hold in prayer the church in Botswana and the college there. I am not trying to pronounce it because I don't want to not do it well, but it is a college there. They are global ministry mission partners in Botswana, and the country is suffering from a severe drought at this time. So we want to hold them in prayer, and let me make sure I haven't missed any more. I believe that's all. Let us turn to God in prayer at this time. Loving God, you are a God of the poor, a God of the wealthy, and God of those of us who are somewhere in between. You love us all, which is hard to believe when we consider how we treat one another. We do not live as we should. We do not love as you have taught us. We do not care for one another with compassion in the same ways that you care for us, O oh God. Forgive us for our words. Forgive us for our actions for the social media choices that we post which harm others. Forgive us for not caring and loving as you have taught us. We say the words of the prayer that Jesus taught, telling us to forgive, and yet we hold tightly onto our grudges. Jesus told us to love you and to love others, but we struggle, O oh God, with loving our neighbor. Help us to do better. Remind us of your ways of love, simply loving. We pray this day, O oh God, for those who are hurting from our actions and words. And we pray for all who need forgiveness or need to learn to forgive. Help us to follow more closely in your footsteps to love as only you love, O oh God. We pray this day, O oh God, with thanks for the joys that have been shared here. We give thanks, O oh God, for the testimony of lives that are turned back to you. We pray, O oh God, for those who are facing surgeries, we pray for Doug and others who are under hospice care that you would be with them on this journey, O oh God. Hold their family close in your arms. We pray for all of those who are recovering from surgeries and other health concerns. We lift them up to you, O oh God, for healing and for strength on these different journeys. We pray, O oh God, for the families of those who have lost loved ones, whether it was expected, O oh God, or sudden. The grief is there for each of them, and we pray for them that you would be with them and comfort them and reassure them of your love of your promise of hope and salvation. We pray for our churches in Botswana, for the college there that helps to educate so many. 
And we give thanks, O God, for the partnerships we can have with our neighbors around the world. We pray for all of those who are on our prayer list this day, whose needs continue. We lift them to you, O God. It's in the name of your Son that we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Ken, and thank you, Karen. Appreciate that for this beautiful piece. Our scripture lesson today comes from Paul's letter to the church in Ephesus, to the book of Ephesians, the beginning with the fourth chapter, verse 25, and going on through the fifth chapter, verse 2. Not as long as it seems in everybody. <laughs> and Paul writes, So then, putting away a falsehood, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members one of another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And do not make room for the devil. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked with a seal for the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wrangling and slander, together with all malice. And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ has forgiven you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children and live in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Here is a reading from God's holy word. If you want to have any lasting relationship, I don't care if it's friendship, I don't care if it's marriage, I don't care if it's a work relationship, church relationship, uh, a marriage relationship, it doesn't matter, a relationship with God, there are two things you must have. One is honesty, and the other is love. We must be honest with one another, and we must be loving with one another. Paul starts out in his, church, uh, his letter to the church in Ephesus, which is in modern-day Turkey, and he writes, put away all falsehood. From you. It makes it very clear to us. He also says, if you're a thief, quit stealing and start <coughs> having an honest job so you can help other people. These are very basic things, and loving sounds very easy, doesn't it? We need to be honest, we need to be loving. Of course, anybody can do that. Jim, we all know that. But you know what? We do very little of that as Christians, especially the honesty part. And you know why? Because we want to be loving. We're not very honest, are we? Because we want to spare someone's feelings. Well, I should talk to so-and-so about this or that, but I don't, gosh, I just, you know, they might get upset if I said anything, you know. So, so we don't say anything. And you know what happens? Pretty, pretty soon we begin to overlook it, but then you know what always happens? starts to bug us, doesn't it? That pot gets turned on. The water starts to boil. And then, you know, I mean, it's if at first it doesn't bother us a whole lot. We, we overlook it, and then it gets turned up a little more. And then, then it starts to bug us. And, but we still don't say anything because we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You know? and then, then it really starts to bug us. And really starts to get to us, and that temperature gets turned up a little more. But still, we want to be good, loving Christians, so we don't want to say anything. And then it really gets turned up, and the lid blows off. And then we say and do stuff that we really don't mean. And then we go, oh my gosh, what did I just do? Why does that happen? We weren't honest. We're kind of being, well, I hate to use this word, fake. A little false, maybe? Because we want to be loving. We, we, we think we have the loving part down. But folks, if you really love someone and you're in a relationship with them, I'm sorry, you have to be honest, too. You have to have honesty and you have to have loving at the same time. Any relationship. Now, the other side is, okay, you know, all right, Jim, 
I don't want you to say, Jim, thank you so much for giving me permission to be honest. I don't want you to leave here and call somebody up, bang on somebody's door and say, all right, my pastor today said I need to be honest, so let me let you have it, buddy. You know, you've been bugging me. You've been doing this. You know, let me tell you something. You know, by golly, let me just get clear the air here. No, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> if you go do that, you're on your own. <laughs> I don't want anybody calling me, you know. Because there's a difference between being honest and being mean, isn't there? There really is. Now, we have a lot of meanness going on out in the world, but we don't have a lot of honesty going on out in the world. We get mad, fire something up on social media. By golly, I'll teach them. <laughs> Not really. You know, we, we uh, divide into little groups to, to get mad at one another, either politically or socially or for any reason. We seem to want to split each other up and fight against each other, you know. And we think, well, by golly, I'm just being honest. I was just honest about it. No, we're just being mean about it. Honesty without love is meanness. I'm sorry, but that, that suit you're wearing just stinks. I don't know why you even bought it. You know, that dress, what were you thinking? You know, that's not being honest. That's just being mean. That's just being mean. And we, we're good about being mean, but we're not really good about being honest. We need to be honest. As Paul writes. We need to put away falsehood, but he also writes, you know, we need to be loving and forgiving and kind. And, and we, we need to put away all anger and, and hatred and malice. And, and we need to get all that stuff away because we need to love each other as God has loved us. It's not easy to love. And it's not easy to be honest with one another. But that's how... Paul tells us that's how we're supposed to live. Now, folks, this may come as a shock to everybody. It may come as a shock. Jackie and I have been married for 31 years, and, and believe it or not, there are things that I do that really tick her off. I know it's hard. To, you know, no, it's not. You know, it, it, we're married. It happens. You know, there are things. And there's times Jackie honestly has to sit me down and go, Look, Jim. <laughs> I love you, but, you know, there's some things you need to be aware of in your life. Really? I don't know. I did what? That makes you mad. Why does that make you mad? I did, oh, oh, okay. And you know when I really get mad the most <laughs> is when she's right. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, I do that, don't I? Don't got it. But we love each other, and we have to be honest with one another lovingly honest. I, I saw a, uh, a training video one time when I was a military chaplain. Uh, we were taking uh, classes to help couples in marriage enrichment, you know, and they were interviewing a couple uh, that had been through the program, and one of, them, one of them said, a man said, I almost ruined my marriage with my wife. So I almost ruined it. And he said, uh, we were in, in couples therapy, and the therapist said to be honest. So I was honest. You know, I didn't like this. I didn't like that. That stank. That's, uh, you know, why do you do this? This is how I like to have things around here. Blah, 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 blah. You know, he says, I realize I wasn't being honest, just being mean. Because I wasn't being loving at the same time. I was being selfish, and I was being mean, and I was being ugly. But I really wasn't being honest. Because if you're going to be honest, you have to be loving. You can't have, you know, honesty... Without loving is cruelty, and loving without honesty is just fakeness. You need both of them together at the same time. I think, you know, since school has started for one of our school districts, and school will start this next week uh, for uh, the rest of, rest of us, and I know, please, kids, hold, hold, hold your enthusiasm down while I'm trying to preach up here. Okay, hold it down. I, mean, I understand uh, school started back, you know, but, you know, you know there are two uh, groups of people that are paid to be loving and honest with you at the same time. One of us is we preachers, and the other one are these wonderful people we call teachers. Give them a round of applause or something out there. You, we got retired ones, we got active ones out there. I know. You know, teachers are paid to be loving and honest at the same time. 
You know, I'll give you a couple examples from, from my childhood. In the third grade, my third grade teacher, Mrs. Smith, pulled me aside and said, Jim, or at that point it was Jimmy. I dropped the Y in high school because I thought it was too cool for it. Not really. Uh, but she pulled me aside, Jimmy, I'm sending a note home to your parents. Oh, no, I didn't do anything wrong, Miss Smith. Oh, you didn't do anything wrong. But, Jim, your reading level isn't really where it needs to be. What? <laughs> Did I like to hear that? Absolutely not. I was devastated. I was, how dare she tell me that my read? Well, she was right. I'm sending a note home to your parents so they can help you do stuff at home that will get that reading level up to where it needs to be. And guess what? It worked. Did I like it? Did I like hearing about it? Did I like doing the extra stuff at home? Absolutely not. Did it help me? Yes. Because she was loving and honest with me at the same time. When I was in high school, it still continued on. My English, one of my English teachers, Mr. Do Doty, uh, called me up to the desk uh, privately uh, away from the class and said, uh, here, Jim, I want you to look at this. And I held it up, and it was a paper I'd written. And he goes, uh, what is that, Jim? Well, Mr. Doty, it's a paper I've, I've just written. He goes, and she, he goes, well, what can you tell me about this paper? And I said, there's a lot of red ink on this paper, Mr. Doty. <laughs> And he goes, yeah, that, that's right, Jim, very good. And what can you tell me about that red ink? Why do you think it's on there? Because uh, I made a lot of spelling mistakes. He, he goes, you're absolutely right, Jim, very good, very good. Now, what, are, what else do you see on that paper? I'm looking to go, uh, there are a lot of question marks in red on this paper. I, you know, he goes, yeah, why do you think that is, Jim? Uh, because you can't read my handwriting. Exactly right, Jim. You're very good. Good job, Jim. And what else do you see on that paper, Jim? Uh, there's a big red D up in the corner. Yes. Yes, there is, Jim. Yes. So what do you think you're going to do, Jim? Uh, I'm going to write this paper again. Yes, Jim. Exactly right. Exactly. Loving but honest at the same time. Did I like it? No, I didn't like did it. Did I enjoy writing that paper again? No. Did I like having him talk to me like that? No. But was it the best thing? Yes. He was loving and honest with me at the same time. That's how we're supposed to live. It's not easy to do. You know, we Christians falsely think that loving is easy. Of course, we love each other. We're, we care. We're honest people. Oh, it's not easy to do, folks. It's not easy to do. But that's how we're supposed to live. Because I got a secret for you. God and Jesus don't let us get away with stuff either. Because <laughs> our conscience talks to us when we do stuff we know we're not supposed to do. And tells us, hey, yeah, you know you messed up. Yeah, you know it was your fault. You can't blame anybody but yourself. Yes. Or there are some, sometimes we're struggling with something like we're in the disease of addiction and we just need help. We just can't do it on our own. And it's hard to face up to that. It's hard to face to hear that loving honesty that helps people really recover and stay in recovery. It's not easy. It's not, we Christians like to make it easy, but it's not easy. Not easy at all. But that's how we're called to live. That's what Paul is telling to that church in Ephesus, and that's what Paul is telling to us today. That's how we're supposed to live. Let us pray. Almighty and most wonderful God, we praise you for being honest and loving with us, even when we don't want to hear it, even when we know it's our own fault, and yes, Lord, even when it's very true and we know we could do better. May we be loving and honest in our relationship with you, loving and honest in our relationship with one another. Yes, Lord, there are things that make us angry, and it's okay, but help us not to let our anger turn into sinning and frustration and grudges and even hatred toward one another. But let us be loving and let us be honest and caring and forgiving as you are with us, so may we be with one another. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. The call of Christ is extended to each and every one of you. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, this is the day to do it, to know how much you are loved and cared for. This table is set.
up with us today. Table of communion is open to everyone. Everyone who believes in Jesus Christ is welcome to come. There are no barriers in this table. Christ dying upon the cross is why we have this meal of remembrance. And we not remember that we are loved and that we are cared for and that we belong. Let us please stand if you're able as we sing our hymn of invitation and communion. one of our youth from church camp. So, hope you enjoy it. Jesus said, I am the, I'm the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. This isn't a physical thing like eating this particular bread and drinking from this particular cup. It's what gives us life that lasts. It's the connection we make between us and Jesus, the Lord of this table, who calls all of us here. We come to have our souls fed. We come to connect again to our Lord. We come to receive the strength we need to go out into the world as Christ's presence in the world. Let us pray. God, who gives us a clear vision of what we can be in Jesus and who walks beside us every step of the way, we thank you for this bread and cup, symbols of the true bread of life and cup of salvation that we have in Jesus. We thank you for our brothers and sisters that gather at this or other tables throughout our world Thank you for their witness and the help and inspiration we get from them. We pray that as we take the bread and cup, you would also pour out your spirit upon us, that we could show your image to a world who so desperately needs you. In the name of Jesus, amen. A reading from 1, Christian, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
invite our acolytes to please come forward. And as they come forward, I ask that you please stand if you're ready, if you're able, uh, for our benediction. Let us please bow our head for our benediction. Almighty, most wonderful God, we are truly thankful for the way that you love us and teach us to love others in the same way, with honesty, with love, forgiveness, kindness, putting away all hatred, and being forgiving. We ask, Almighty God, that as we leave this place, we'll show that kind of love to our families, to those in our neighborhoods, where we work, where we live, where we go to school, in all areas. We ask, Almighty God, that you'll be before us and be behind us, to our right hand, to our left, above us and below us, until such a time as we may come together again on this side of the river or the next. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.